Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited you guys are here today, so thank you so much for clicking on today's video. I wanna quickly apologize for being absent the last few weeks. I do not have a good excuse, guys. Honestly, I just got really busy with work, with travel, and just decided to take a quick little break and catch up once I got back. Then once I got back, I was like, yes, I'm gonna get started, and then I forgot about jet lag. So I was jet lagged for about five days. It took me a while to get out of it. So I'm sorry for that little delay, but we are back on track with our original program. Today's makeup look was supposed to be a Valentine's Day look, but because I missed the deadline, I still decided to go in on this really pretty Valentine's Day-ish colored makeup. I'm playing with the matte palette today, which is all that's pretty much on my eyes. I also played a little bit with the Natasha Denona new Love Palette and new Fenty Stop, a little bit of everything. It's um, overall a really, really beautiful look to create. If you guys like what you're seeing, continue watching. And before we do, as always, please be sure to give me a video a thumbs up as well as subscribe subscribe if you guys are not. I do makeup videos. Usually it's like every week about two, maybe three uploads sometimes. Um, but lately it's been like, you know, a little bit of a mess. But we are back guys, back on track and I'm so excited to be here. So thank you guys again for joining me. And without further ado, do let's jump into this look. So I'm gonna start off by applying some base onto my eyelids. This is an absolute must for all of my makeup looks. I never skip a base. And lately I've been kind of playing with concealers and I realized it does not pick up the shadows the way I like them to. So here I am going back to my OG P. Louise base in the shade Rumor 02. And I'm also gonna pick up the P. Louise brush and pretty much pat this all over the eyelid. So for my eyeshadows, I'm actually going to be mixing two different palettes today. The first one is going to be the Melt Cosmetics Millennial Pink Palette, and then the second one is the Natasha Denona Love Palette. These two palettes are so similar, yet so different. So they both do have like the pink vibe. Let me show you guys the Melt one first. This one, the minute I saw it, I absolutely fell in love with it because I'm all about these pink mauve tones, but I also love that they do have black, gray, and silver on the side, so it's really unique. You could do so much with this. And then you have the Natasha Denona palette, which is very similar as well. You have pinks, you have the berries, the mauves, the black and the silver, but then you get a little bit of purple, some gold, and then also some other unique colors. So they are very similar, very different, um, but I think they're both like absolutely beautiful. So I'm pretty much gonna mix them both for this look. I'm gonna tap first into the shade Modern Love, and I'm also gonna use my Smith 232 brush, and pretty much I'm gonna start this right on the outer corner of the eye, to the center, and then all the way to the inner corner of my eye. So I'm starting off with a very light amount first just because this color does get pretty dark. So I wanna make sure that I like the placement and then from there I can build it up and keep on adding more. <sighs> oh my God, this color is so, so pretty. It's blending really nicely and there's also zero fallout as well, which is a plus. Love this. So I'm gonna move now onto the next eye following the same steps. Okay, so before I move on to the next shade, I'm gonna go in with a smaller blending brush. This is also from Smith, and it is the brush 230, so it's just like a little bit of a smaller blending brush versus the original one that I was using. So I'm gonna grab this brush, and I'm simply gonna go over what I've already applied on, but right towards the inner corner of the eye, I'm just gonna blend it out as much as possible, and kind of going inward. Now I'm gonna tap really quickly into the Natasha Denona palette, picking up the shade Heartbeat, which is a little bit more of a deeper red, and I'm gonna add this just to the outer corner of the crease. I'm not gonna build it up too much just yet, or I really don't know if I'm gonna build it up, but I just wanna add a little bit just to the outer part because I do wanna make it just a little, like a little deeper. And then just kind of moving it now to the front. So I'm not really blending it, I'm just kind of tapping it into the crease, into the color. Kind of like that. So we're gonna go back into this color a little later, but I just wanted to add it there first for a little bit of guidance. Okay, you guys, I have a tray of M&Ms I've been munching on. Pixie sent these to me, and honestly, after today, I really need to cut like eating candy. I just love it. Uh, Pixie sent this to me for Valentine's Day. My face is on the M&M. How do they do that? So cute. I'm also about to start my period, so. We'll get into the hormonal breakouts going on right now, as well as this hickey on my forehead, but these are kind of saving me and I'm not mad about it. So moving on now to the lid color, which I'm so excited about because yesterday I was playing with 
these shades. I was so impressed at how metallic buttery and amazing they went on so before we move into applying that we obviously need to cut the crease and normally you guys know i use e louise to cut it it's like my favorite but recently i have discovered another base that i think is better when working with metallic shades and that is the fenty base so i use this on my full face of fenty makeup but i come to realize that i don't like this as an all over base but i prefer this more to cut the crease when applying the metallic on top of that it really holds the color makes it stand out. I don't explain the consistency, but it's definitely a lot more gummy and tacky, um, but I find it to be perfect for the metallic shades. So I'm gonna start off by applying it right at the inner corner of the eye, and then from there working it up. So something to know about this base too is that it does dry down pretty quick. If you use it, make sure that you apply it on and work one eye at a time. After I apply it on, I'm now just going to go ahead and tap the end into that crease, which is why I added that color first. And I'm not adding it this way. I'm kind of pushing it back into the lid. You got to work kind of quickly and add the lid color before it dries down too much. So I'm going to go in with the shade Mixed Emotions. So I'm going to use this flat brush from MAC and just start by patting it onto the lid. I'm going to pick up a little bit of Ruby Star. And then with the other side of the brush, I'm just going to pack this right into the outer corner of the eye. Not really into the crease, but just kind of where the base ends. Alright, so then for the front of the eye, I'm going to go in with the shade Rose Brunch now. And I'm simply going to add that just to the inner corner of the eye. Now I'm going to tap into that shade Heartbeat one more time from the Natasha Denona palette. And I'm going to pack that over Ruby Star. Alright, and there you have it guys. That is the eye so far. This is the finish of the base on my hand, but you see how it's like dried down, kind of cracks a little bit. It almost looks like dry glue on my hand. Uh, that's what I'm saying, you gotta work pretty quick once it's on. So, okay, let me do this one more time. So picking up that base, and I'm going to saturate the brush into there. I was also swatching the Natasha Denona palette, and I just have to show you guys how pretty these two shades are. I'm a sucker for these kind of tones, but look at those colors. Last thing I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of liner towards the front of the eye. So the shade I'm gonna go in with is Grind, and it actually looks very similar to what I have on the inner corner of the eye. These were actually all the options, but I decided to go with the Urban Decay one. Um, but I'm such a fan of any kind of glitter, gel, liner, gel shadows. Really finish off these kind of looks, and especially a look like this when you're doing like a cut crease. I I think it is so important to kind of seal the crease part and I'm pretty much just gonna add this right there and who doesn't like a little glitter anyways I actually think I want to mix a little bit of this one it's from kimchi and it is called diamond shards oh my god <laughs> best name ever oh the glitter is fire I'm gonna mix it in with the urban one I just put on diamond shards I am so dead if you guys don't know what a shard is it's pretty much a caquita and a fart at the same time. Google it and you will see. All right, so next I'm gonna go in with some eyeliner and I'm gonna use this one from Marc Jacobs and it is called Red Wine. I always talk about this one as being one of my favorite red eyeliners to exist. I feel like still to this day I've tried other ones, but the Marc Jacobs formula is just one of the best for eyeliners. It is so long wearing and so buttery and creamy when it goes on and they're super easy to blend out. Like you can literally do this, smudge it, wear shadow on top of it and it is fire. So it's very impressive. So I'm just gonna do this to line the outer corner of my eye. I'm gonna go back in with the Natasha Denona palette in Heartbeat and just set down the eyeliner. I mean, I don't really have to, but this will intensify it. Do you see what I mean? It just like added an intense finish. I'm also gonna line the top portion of my eye with this while I'm here. Okie dokie. This is honestly looking so good. So we're moving now into some mascara and then some lashes. So today I'm gonna do a waterproof mascara and I'm gonna use the Better Than Sex waterproof mascara in the shade black and I just kind of felt like using this one um no particular reason just want to try a different formula I do love the original better than sex as it is but I actually hear really great things about the waterproof formula I kind of avoid waterproof sometimes just because 
they do not come off. I mean, I guess that's a good thing, but sometimes I want it to get off my eyes, so. I'm mainly focusing this on the outer portion of my eye just because I'm gonna put falsies. I don't really need to do too much mascara. So I've complained about this already on Twitter. I complained about this on stories, but I got a lash up, guys, and I hate it. It is actually, I feel like it kind of ruined my lashes. Like my lashes don't have a pop right now. And I'm hitting the six week mark, which I'm thrilled about because after six weeks, they say that it starts to kind of fade away. And I am noticing my lashes are falling off and I'm noticing they're getting brittle. I'm noticing they're also kind of getting chopped in half. It's just been a nightmare. I don't know if, it, if I just had a bad experience or if this is how it is, but I am not a fan of a lash lift. Like it is just not for me. I also, when it was like in full effect, I just hated how it had a weird cast on my eyelashes. I almost feel like my eyelashes have a gray finish to them right now. Like the black mascara can't get to the fullest potential. So it's been a real struggle, definitely a lesson learned and I don't think I'm ever gonna touch my eyelashes again. I mean, look, you guys know my lashes, how big they are and how they look normally and they're just like shrinking by the minute and I mean, it is what it is. They're gonna grow back. I am not gonna be doing that ever, ever again. That's where I'm at with my eyelashes. So for lashes today, I'm gonna use the Batty B in the style Batty, just because they're really nice and flare at the end, so it's gonna give me that little bit of fullness right there, but also like a full body fullness as well. And I am going to actually place them first right in the middle. I'm gonna adjust it on towards the front of the eye first, and then the end of it, I'm gonna kinda go a little higher than where I normally place it just to kind of extend it out. One thing about my lashes too that's changed is they just kind of go everywhere. And now I have to like go in with scissors or something really sharp and separate them and comb them through because they are crazy. Like a part of me just kind of wants to chop off my eyelashes. I feel like at this point, I don't care. They'll probably look better chopped off than the way they've been looking. Okay, there we go for that lash. Yeah, we just kind of added the flare, but it's not like taking over everything too much. Oh, she cute. There we go, guys. Lashes are on and it makes seriously such a difference. So this is giving me like the pow at the end and then there's still lash in the front, but obviously you could still see the cut, which is exactly what I wanted. So we're good. So let's move now onto the face. So I backed up the camera so you guys can get an idea of how the makeup looks from afar. Also so you can see my skin because it is going through it right now. Breakouts everywhere, I have a scar, I have tons of texture and tons of little bumps underneath my skin which is so weird because I haven't had that happen to me in a very long time. And on top of that I have this hickey on my forehead. <laughs> not really a hickey, it happened because I was using my gua sha earlier. We're gonna need coverage today. We're also probably not gonna use too much highlight just because that's gonna enhance any kind of texture I may have and we're just gonna use what I feel my skin needs at the moment. So you're gonna start off by putting a little bit of a freshening spray on my skin. And this one is from Fresh. It is Vitamin Nectar Antioxidant Glow Water. So this glow water is essentially just gonna freshen up my skin. It is infused with vitamin C, E, and B5, lemon, orange, and also mineral. So it's a really nice pick-me-up whenever you need to just refresh your skin. I'm also gonna use another Fresh product, and this one is the Lotus Youth Preserve Moisturizer with Super Lotus. Adding this just kind of to the T-zone area. I'm gonna add this all over. I actually went to Big Sur about a month ago with Fresh Beauty and learned all about this moisturizer and how it works. And it's become honestly one of my favorite daily moisturizers to use. It's a very, very lightweight, um, but very, very rich with hydration. And then I'm gonna use just a little bit of primer just in my T-zone area. And I'm gonna use today the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Blurring Primer. So the only reason I'm using this in the T-zone is because that's where I want to blur out. This is just always my concern is like this area. So I'm sticking to it right there. I don't really need it all over other than this area. And we cannot forget eye cream. I really wanna use my banana one, but I think I'm gonna switch it up today. And this one is my Strivectum Hyaluronic Tripeptide Gel Cream Eye Cream. And I'm just gonna tap this underneath of the eyes. This is a very unique formula uh, because it has a blend of the cream and the gel in there. It's super, super lightweight as well. So it's really unique because of that blend. The cream is gonna really help to nourish and hydrate this area, but then the gel's really cooling, really lightweight, and just comfortable. It doesn't feel heavy at all, and it doesn't really mess up how my under eye makeup's gonna look. For foundation, I'm gonna talk about my favorite current foundation at the moment. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation, and I wear this in the shade Six Warm Chud. Chud. I had no idea that this was such a full coverage flawless foundation. I've always known about their previous foundation and 
based on the Charlotte Tilbury style of makeup. I assumed this was gonna be a airbrush, very lightweight, kind of satin finish, not much coverage, but I was so wrong about this. So I was watching, I believe it was someone's live recently, and they, they raved about this, and I had to try it out, and I swear I have been using it nonstop. The coverage is incredible on this, and I feel like I have the right shade for once in my life. Normally, I use a shade to too darker for my skin, but I think this is pretty on point. Like, when have you ever seen a foundation this light on me? If you know me, you should know that I like my foundations a lot darker. Um, coverage on this is super, super nice. It is gonna be on the fuller coverage and it does dry down to a pretty matte finish. It's not like fully matte, but it's about a medium and matte finish for sure. I think we're pretty good on coverage right there. It looks really nice and even. So I'm now gonna go in with the Beauty Blender. This is our new Bounce Concealer in the shade 320W. And I just wanna add this right there. I'm gonna just tap it on first. And I'm also gonna use this underneath my eyes, which I'm so excited about. So this is your new, like I said, Bounce Concealer. I honestly don't have details on the coverage on this, so I guess we shall find out. I'm gonna go as close as I can to the side of my nose as well. Mmm, looks really nice. I'm actually gonna go in now with the Fenty. This is our matte chic in the shade Coco. And we are gonna do some contouring with this. Actually, I haven't done a stick contour like this in quite a while, so I figured today's a perfect day to do this look. And I'm gonna go just about right there. I'm not gonna blend this up just yet because I do wanna blend it in with the brush. Pounce it into place to get the most coverage possible. So I'm gonna grab another Real Techniques brush. This one is the Ultimate Buffing Brush, which I think that's what I was actually trying to use, yeah. Definitely used the wrong brush, but it's okay. So I'm gonna use this to buff out the contour. I pretty much want to marry the shade into the highlight. All right, there we go for that. So I noticed the foundation isn't going as matte as it normally is. I think that's because of the concealer. The concealer does have a little bit more of a luminous kind of creamy finish. So for me, I'm not sure if I'm much of a fan of that because I feel like it's kind of settling into certain pores and areas. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and set now with some powder and then from there move on into bronzing, blush, and then just kind of getting my skin back to looking good. I think I definitely need to like matte it down a little bit, but I don't wanna go in with too much of a heavy powder, so I'm just gonna use some Laura Mercier transition powder and set my T-zone area. I'm gonna press it into the brush and then now just press on the skin. So I'm not picking up too much because, like I said, I just want it to like set where I need it to. Like right here, oh my gosh, this texture. At this point, I think I need to do my little light therapy on my skin and hopefully it goes away by the morning. If you guys don't know, I have my at home, my very own skin light therapy. I've actually been neglecting it a little bit, so I think tonight I'm gonna have to throw the blue light on. So the blue light is what's going to target any kind of like acne, any breakouts, bacteria, and then the red light is for anti-aging as well as inflammatory. So I use both of them. I don't use the blue one as much because I don't really have acne, but in a case like today where I do have where I have breakouts going on and my skin's just like not looking how I like it to, I definitely think that I need to throw that one on. I actually am gonna be doing a video for you guys sharing all of my favorite skincare tools. Like I just talked about the gua sha earlier, I have the light therapy, like there's so many skincare devices that I love and I use and I wanted to share them with you guys. Oh my god, you freaked me out. Whew. Oh, you're leaving me? We're gonna go now and brighten up my face with some blush. I need some blush today. So for my blush, I'm gonna go in with the NARS Overlust Palette. Have you noticed that everything I'm using is actually pink, including my backdrop and every single palette? I just realized that right now, but I'm gonna go in with this Overless palette from NARS, and I'm just gonna tap into this color. This one is called Let It Burn, and i just been loving this shade. It is like the perfect pink. It's like a peony-ish kind of coral pink, but it is so nice, like mira right on the apples, taking it up as well. Blush seriously brightens up my face so much. I don't know if you guys remember the days I used to be anti-blush, I was not a blush girl. But once I realized how to apply it on and realized that I don't need to wear the brightest shade possible, 
I feel like I find it to really uplift my face and make it look just more youthful and brighter. But I love how I can really build this blush up. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna use a little bit of my Hoola bronzer for some nose contouring. I'm gonna use this brush from Morphe as well. It's the G G41. It's actually nice when I just need a quick contour. There's days where I take more time on it, and there's days where I just have to swipe and go. I also like using the tip of it to define the tip of my nose. So I hit right above, and that gives me the instant push. And then once I'm done, I get the back of the beauty blender, and I just hit right over it and that just slightly diminishes any kind of line of demarcation that there was. Okay, so next I need to do just a little bit of baking underneath my eyes, no matter what kind of makeup look I do. If I'm wearing concealer, I absolutely, absolutely need to set underneath my eyes, and I just find that the Laura Mercier powder sets it the best. You guys know I try other stuff, but when it comes down to longevity and really ensuring that this area is gonna stay nice and smooth and in place, this to me is just like the ultimate go-to powder that will do me no wrong. And I'm gonna pinch the side of the beauty blender as tight as I can, and just add it right there. And then we just gotta set a little bit down the middle of the nose and then hit that tip right there. There you go. We're gonna tap back into the Millennial palette and do a little bit of smokiness underneath of my eyes. I think for my under eyes, I do wanna do something a little bit more on the smoky side just because this look is so dramatic on top. I kinda wanna tie it all into the bottom. So going back in with the Millennial palette, I'm gonna tap into the shade Modern Love and then we're also gonna use the Natasha Denona um, Heartbeat shade as well. Now I'm gonna go in with Harpy and just go directly over what I just did, but I'm pretty much lining only the lash line because this color is so red. I don't want my whole on dry to be that color, so I just need a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back in with that Red Wine Eyeliner and just line my lash line. Oh my goodness. See what that just did to the eyes? You think you're better off alone? So as I told you guys, I don't want to do too much highlight. I'm gonna do like a very little bit, just like on my nose and like just right here. But I don't wanna do too much, too much highlight, like how I normally do. I love highlight, but right now my skin is, like I said, and of course, I pulled out like the most blinding highlight ever. So this is a Jouer Molten Glow, and if you guys wanna find like a legit blinding highlight, I think this is the one you should definitely look into. It's uh, like a nice champagne color. A little goes a long way when I use this I'm telling you guys I can do this much and that will last me all over my face like watch my forehead I had to take some off you see that it's it's incre it's crazy it's crazy too much too much right now um, but I do want to add a little bit onto my nose okay I think we're good. So now we're moving on to my lip color and I have been kind of digging and playing with different things and I come to realize with this kind of eye makeup look, it's best to go along the pink kind of glossy side. I think that will complement it the best. So I did my best to find a good pink lip pencil, a pink nude lipstick, and then two glosses. And I think you guys are gonna like this combo. So my lip color today is gonna be the LA Girl Perfect Precision Lip Liner in the shade Blushing. All right, so there is a lip liner. So next I'm gonna go in with my lip color and today I'm using the Maybelline Beige Babe. This is an OG favorite lipstick of mine. It is one of the most perfect pinky nude blush tones. So if you guys want like a regular lipstick that is gonna be along that line of colors, definitely check this entire nude line out. They have every single nude undertone you can imagine, but this one just happens to be my favorite. So I'm gonna pop this right into the center of my lip and just pat it around. I feel because I already did so much lip liner, I don't want to swipe it everywhere and ruin what I did. I just kinda wanna pat it into place. Lastly, we're gonna put some gloss on my lips. So gloss to me is an absolute must whenever I'm doing a very light pink or a very nude lip. Otherwise, I feel like I just look crusty, dusty, and dry. So this is really gonna help to make your lips look very luscious, very dreamy, and I feel like it just kinda sets the whole vibe. So I'm gonna go in with the Fenty Hot Chocolate and the Sweet Mouth Gloss Bombs.
So that is it for today's video. I really hope all of you guys enjoyed this look and this tutorial. If you guys did, as always, please be sure to thumbs it up and let me know in the comments down below. Thank you again so much for watching. I love you all so much. I gotta head out of here. I'm going to Target. When I come back, I gotta review and get this video up for you guys ASAP. So I will see you guys later. Bye.